Hi everyone, and thanks for joining me today on this webinar. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules to, to come and listen to me talk about uh, Education City and Edmentum. I'm going to um, go through, through a few things today, but first of all, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Gareth Bradwick, and I'm the Partnership and Development Manager here at Edmentum. I've been with the company for over eight years now. Um, and in that time, I've seen a lot of growth and development, and especially over the last couple of years. But just to go through um, what I'm going to be talking about today. So first of all, I'm going to be, uh, give you a bit of an introduction um, to Edmentum and to Education City and, and what we are and, and what the programme is. And then I'm going to actually spend most of my time actually in the programme itself. Um, so I can show you different ways that Education City, City can help you with um, student attainment and growth. And then towards the end of the webinar, I'll quickly show you a, a couple of snippets of what our schools say and how they use Education City. And of course, we'll have some time for some questions and answer right towards the end. You'll notice on the screen um, that you'll have a, a Q&A that you can type your questions into. I can see what it's someone already has uh, started it in the chat box, which is fantastic. So please keep those questions coming and any thoughts that you have about the programme. And I'll do my best to answer those at the end. But first of all, I, I want to give you a little bit of information about who we are as a company. Some of you may have um, used some of our programmes in the past, as we started as far back as the 1960s with our US curriculum solution, Courseware. Throughout the years, we've developed a number of different solutions to cater for adapting needs around the world. Today, we support over 1 million teachers with the digital learning of over 14 million students. The majority of our solutions started their life as a US curriculum based resource. However, Education City, which we're talking about today, is our UK curriculum programme, which caters for students from ages three right the way through to 11. So what is Education City? It is a teaching, learning and assessment resource that covers foundation up to year six in English, math and science. It was launched over 20 years ago and is filled with fun and engaging content that suits the academic year level that your students are in. On the platform itself, there are over 5,000 pieces of content in total, all of which can be used whenever you need it and all fit with certain content types, depending on the approach you're taking with any given topic. And as I previously mentioned, Education City is fully aligned to the UK curriculum. However, it is very adaptable to other curriculum as it is very much topic based. So we have a number of schools who use different curriculum around the world um, that also use Education City to support their students. Behind the scenes, uh, we have a dedicated team of educationalists, artists and developers that create, on average, around a thousand pieces of new content every year to ensure that teachers have the flexibility to, te to teach what they want, how they want. As mentioned, Education City has a host of features that allow it to adapt to your specific needs. You can create customised lessons in advance or set home learning tasks based on what you've done in class. Due to the ever-changing nature of schools in the current climate, Education City is a great tool to include in a blended learning environment, as we not only have digital resources, but also printable options as well. That means anything you're doing in the class can also be replicated and extended upon at home. So it's easy to switch between online and physical learning with Education City, as it also creates a familiar, familiarity with the students, as the characters you see are, are included in everything we do, and they grow up with the students as they progress through the programme. The different types of material we have created a, a, allow the students to engage with the curriculum in different ways, whether that be through higher order thinking skills, through assessments or videos and educational games. The vast majority of the tools we provide are trackable and automatically marked so that you are able to track your students progress and adapt your class accordingly 
if required. Um, and I don't want to focus too much on slides today. I actually wanted to go into the programme itself and talk about how you can use the different tools within Education City to really uh, personalise learning for your students and ultimately uh, improve attainment. So I'm going to come out to this slide deck now and I'm going to go straight into Education City. Now, some of you might have used this programme in the past. Um, as I mentioned, it is over 20 years old now, so it has had different variations on it over time. But what you're looking at now is the complete up-to-date version of Education City, and I'm logged in as an administrator. One of the newest pieces that we've added to Education City that really helps schools, especially in the current climate, are our assessments. So what I want to focus on today is starting off with those assessments uh, and see what kind of tools we can use from there to really understand our students better and help them. So when I'm coming in here as a teacher, I can quickly come and set an assessment uh, and we have uh, formative and summative assessments available to you in English, math and science from year one right the way through to year six. So I can come in here on any given day and set one of my assessments. What I want to focus on, first of all, uh, is actually showing you what the assessments looks like so you know what the students will encounter. And I've just jumped into a formative reading assessment, um, and that is in year two. Now, the tests usually last between 20 and 25 minutes, depending on the test. When do rock calls appear? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my computer sound so you can hear this. When do rock pools appear? Now, this is all sounded out. And this, as I say, is a reading assessment. So the students would read this passage. And then they would pick what they think is the correct answer on the side. So it's very much like a, a standard test, but obviously it's uh, digital. Now, some of our case studies recently have shown that some of our schools use these tests to prepare students for uh, digital assessment. So they're really good practice for that, while at the same time, um, they are tracking your students and seeing what exactly they know. So I've just answered one of those, I'll go to the next question. Why do sea anemones wave their tentacles? Again, you read through this and they would answer the question and they can skip ahead if they don't know the answer and then come back to it at the end. Which word tells you how the crabs move under the water? And this can be completed on any device. So if you have a tablet or even a mobile, as long as they have a, um, a browser, they can log into Education City and complete these assessments. So they would work through these assessments at their own pace. They do have 20 minutes, but you can extend that. Um, and this is all going to be automatically marked for you. So not only whether they're right or wrong, um, but also how they answered each question. So you can really get a, a firm understanding of, of the student's knowledge on any given area. So I'd answer these and then I'd end the assessment once I've finished and I would get that score. Obviously, I didn't complete much of the, the assessment here, so I got quite a low score. But again, this is going to be saved to my name. And I just want to quickly show you as well a spelling assessment because that varies slightly. Um, so the, the difference really with the spelling assessment is it was more about typing. So the other one will be drag and drop or um, multiple choice. But with spelling, they actually a lot of the time obviously have to spell the words so you, so you know what they're, they're struggling with. The word is sea. We ran into the sea and swam. Spell the word C. So they would come in here and type their answer. So if I were to put that answer, you could then see what I've written. Um, and you can see that I've just gotten the words confused with the other version of C. So that's something that we could perhaps work on. The word is kit. Clara put her football kit in her bag. Spell the word kit. So the assessments are really great. They're simple to use. Um, they're very clear. And again, you can change the time if you want to. But the idea is that you could sit your, your class down and do these in your own time. Or even you can do them online and set them as that sort of home learning if you're doing a blended learning at the moment. 
So once you've done that, obviously you want to actually see how your students have done so that you can help them with extra content that we have available in Education City. So if I jump over to the scores and reports, in here I can get a really good idea of how my students have done in the test, but not only that, on anything they've done in Education City. So I can set my time frame, come into here and I'll see all of the scores that we have throughout Education City. Now, this is showing me everything, uh, but I just want to look mainly right now at the assessments. And I can see here, Luke at the bottom, he's done a math mathematics assessment in year three, and he got 53%. So I'm gonna click in here because I want to get a, a better knowledge of what they're struggling with. And you can see automatically uh, with the first couple of questions, he got incorrect. You can see his attempt, but I can see now that number sentences might be something that, that my student is, is struggling with. So these tests are really simple to set up and it just gives you a quick um, snapshot of, of what my students know. Another piece that happens straight away with something like uh, an assessment is that we provide them with a revision journal automatically based on the answers that they provided in the test. So if I come into the revision journal here, this has actually set them work based on the questions and the answers they gave. So we're going to be providing them with activities and lessons based on the weaknesses of their test. So this is automatic, you don't have to do anything. You could set this for them um, and they complete this. And next time they come to do the test, um, hopefully then they'll get a better score. So that's something that will hopefully uh, improve the student's attainment just by taking the test and getting that um, initial feedback and, and work to do based on that. But if I go back a step, um, you will also be able to sort of drill down the correct answers and taking this um, as an example, I can then go on and find work that would help my student as well. So as I mentioned, we've got number sentences. So if I go back to the home page now and I want to find some work for number sentences that maybe I can help my student a little bit further. So if I come into search content here, I'm going to search for number sentences. And this can be not just for one particular student that's struggling. You might be doing this subject in the next couple of days and you want to see what content we've got. So if I type that in there, it will then show me all of the relevant content that we have that will help the students. So I've got some activity sheets, which are printable sheets that they can use. I've got some things that will help develop higher order thinking skills. Uh, and I've even got some lessons as well. So if I click on this lesson, they're called a learn screen. And basically they're animation based slideshows that introduce a topic. Now, this is, uh, as I say, this is a lesson, and this one is about number sentences. Hey, Stan, what are you doing? I am playing with my toy garage, and I want to see how many cars I have all together, so I am counting them. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six yellow cars. Now these lessons, you can pause them um, and go through at your own time. So when you're looking for this kind of content, there's a couple of ways you can present this to the students. You can set them as homework or classwork. Um, and you can also bring these up perhaps on your next um, video call with the students if you're doing it virtually or on your projector or smart board. Uh, in the classroom. So not only is this an individualized learning if you need it to be, but also it can help you instruct the students, especially um, it gives you that continuity. So they could be doing Education City at home, but also if you bring Education City in the classroom, whether they're moving virtually or back in the classroom, it's that seamless link. Um, so they have that familiarity and characters they can relate to wherever they are. And one, two, three, three blue cars. How many cars do you have all together, Sten? 
We could write a number sentence to find out, Meg. So my student who I saw could um, was struggling with this particular topic. I could play them this video and pause it throughout and maybe instead of the characters saying it, I could get my students to actually um, count these out loud and, and write the number sentence as well. Going back to my search then, um, I've then shown that lesson, but maybe I want then to prove and see how uh, my student has fared now they've learned that piece. So I'm going to set them an activity. Now the activities are multiple choice based question and answer activities. And it's one of our most popular areas of Education City because again, you can do this as homework or do it in the classroom. And it's an automatically marked feature that drills down into the specific topic that you're interested in. Which is the correct number sentence? So they would select an answer. Use these pictures to help you. Which one gives the correct answer? And if they get it incorrect, it provides some uh, assistance to help them. Brilliant. Now, once I've done that initial video um, lesson with my students, I could then set this as a piece of work, let them do that independently, and then I can go back to my um, my success tracker, my score tracker, and actually see how they fared in this one, which hopefully then they will have responded positively. And if not, we can look at other things to reinforce that learning. But again, there's another option that you can do with this if you wanted to do it as a whole class. So you've got that individualized learning, but what you could do is bring this up in your virtual lesson or in the class or both, um, and then actually get the students to, to answer each question as they come along. So you can do this as whole group learning rather than individualized, um, which wouldn't then be marked. It would just be for you to do. Um, and again, it provides that flexibility. Use these pictures to help you. Which one has added the sheep correctly? Well done. So you can see that the scores uh, is all automatically being marked at the top and that will review for you as we had said before. Um, so you, there's two pieces of work there already. We've got the, the lesson and then we've got the activity which reinforces that lesson and helps you understand the student's understanding of the topic. But we also have some other features. I mentioned we have um, some things to develop higher order thinking skills. Now, these are called Thinkits. And Thinkits are really simple sort of question and answer activities, which you can pose to the students, perhaps at the start of the day to get them concentrated, um, or perhaps after lunch again, to get them thinking. Um, and they offer an open-ended question, first of all. So this one, some of the numbers have fallen off the doors in our building. Which of these numbers do we need to make the door number correct? And so you'd open that out to the class, get them to give suggestions. And then the answer tab would show the answer. So they're really simple, but they're a great way to expand um, their conversation outward to the group um, and allow you to get the students thinking. And again, I'm talking about math here specifically, but I, I will jump over quickly to um, an, an English topic as well, just to show you the difference. But it's very much similar. You've got the thinkits and activities and lessons and those characters come throughout. So this is um, an English resource about homophones. These words are all homophones. Let's look at their different meanings together. The words not and not are homophones. They sound the same, but they have different spellings and meanings. So this plays into what I was talking about a little bit before during the spelling test, where I put C S E W E instead of S E A. Um, and so if I notice that my students are struggling with that, I could perhaps focus on homophones and play them this activity. And all of this, um, you, as I say, you can set and do live in the classroom. 
or you can actually prepare work to be done at home too. So as you're going through this, um, as I mentioned, there's over 5,000 pieces of content throughout math, English and science. So really thorough and a lot of different um, pieces of work. We have phonics works in the lower grades um, and we have science experiments and things like that all within the program itself. What a lot of schools do is actually set that as specific homework or classwork or home learning, if you like. Um, and when you come into here, all of the teachers have their own space to set work or save pieces of content that they really like. And you come into here and you add content from anything. So using that search feature, you can add content straight into here. Um, you can then set that either as a whole class learning you can do it as specific groups. So if you have a certain attainment group or you have maybe an after school spelling club, you can maybe set it for those students instead or even down to the individual. So in theory, you could have one piece of uh, homework for every individual student. They wouldn't see anybody, else, anybody else's work and they'd only see their own um, and they wouldn't see what year level they're being set. So if you've got a grade five student working at a great uh, year three level, you could set them that year three work and hopefully improve their attainment and without them feeling patronized or feeling down about the fact that they're doing lower work because they wouldn't know. So the, the essence of Education City is a, a really large bank of content that you can use as and when you like um, in any way you, you want to, um, but also it has those assessments as a backup that provide you with um, automatically set work. And some teachers like that flexibility of having the, the automation uh, and some teachers prefer to be able to know exactly what they're setting uh, and can have more control over that. So Education City provides both depending on how the teachers work and on how the students work as well. Within Education City, there are a couple of other um, pieces that I wanted to share with you before we, we look at how other schools are using it. Uh, and then we'll take some questions. So please do ask any questions that you have in the, the question and answer box. Within here, we do, as I mentioned, we have um, pieces that link to, to phonics. So we can go into the phonics and those activities will be there for them. Um, and the, the students look really young in it. It's, again, it's really nice and engaging. We have games which um, they're still educational, but they have that sort of competitive edge to them. We also have videos, and these can be a mix of nursery rhymes in the lower grades um, and more structural video videos as you get older. So I'll just go into one of these to show you what they're like. Listen to the non-fiction passage about migration. Migration is when creatures move from one place to another, and usually back again. Lots of species migrate, such as salmon, butterflies and birds. Birds migrate to find better weather and more food. So again, um, these will be varied in style and content, but they're there for you again as and when you need them. Now, I just want to um, jump back into sort of what other schools have said about Education City and what they do. So I'm just going to pop back into the, the presentation here and actually show you a few of the quotations. So over the last few months, we have had a lot of schools kindly provide um, case studies for us. And after this webinar, we're, um, we will send them to you so you can have a read through of how other schools have been using um, Education City. But it really varies. So, for example, Lord Newton College in Spain, um, they use it really well. And then especially with the assessments over the last year, uh, especially with all the lockdowns that have been in place, they really relied heavily on those assessments to see where the students are, especially when they come back into the classroom. Um, so we can see where the gaps in learning are. And when they're actually planning those lessons um, going forward, they first look at what they need to cover in the curriculum. 
and then they go onto Education City and search for the, what they're going to do um, and the kinds of resources they can use and really blend those two together. And as, as Kelly Pugh says in Brayburn schools, uh, it's been a great support for them while they're transitioning to remote teaching and learning. Um, and it, again, it really helps develop the students' engagement because they have those, those characters that are recognisable um, and is really fun and engaging content. Alex Turner mentions that the students have that buzz and the students are excited to learn through Education City. But again, I can send you these um, a bit more detail so you have those to hand uh, as you're looking through. So I wanted to stop here and then and answer any of the questions that have come through. I've had a couple of questions come through. Um, first of all, one question is, um, are we able to actually trial this programme? Uh, and yeah, absolutely. I will put my contact details up at the end, or you can pop me a message in here before the end of the webinar. If you would like a trial of Education City, I'd be more than happy to arrange that so you can use this with your own students um, and see how they, they fare with it. One of the question is, the, what content is available for, for Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4? Um, within Education City, we don't have key, key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 content. We do have other programmes available that do cater for those. Um, it is American curriculum based, but again, it's very much topic based. So if you want um, to see something like that, um, I can certainly talk you through that and, and I could get in touch about that higher grade content. Another question that's um, come in is about how we actually implement this to, to the schools. And that's a really good question because what a lot of schools do when they take on a program, um, especially at the moment when we're looking for something that's really going to help our students and improve. Um, and we also are very aware of screen time, of course, at the moment. Um, so what we do with our schools is that each school gets an implementation specialist and we take you through full training of each program, both at an administrator level and at a teacher level as well, so that you're all really comfortable with how you use something like Education City. So what we don't want to do is that a, a school takes on a program like this and is just left to it to, to find their way. We want to provide best case examples and advice that we can offer from our experience of talking to schools about using Education City, um, but also being able to train teachers, not just at the start of the year, but throughout the year as well. So that implementation plan really puts together um, everything that you need throughout the year and goal setting so that we can reflect on those goals later in the year. And unless anyone else has any other questions, those um, what I want to do now is, first of all, thank you for um, going through this with me today and, and coming onto the webinar. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time. If you do want to take a trial and a further look into this, please do email me um, with the email on screen, or you can um, pop a message to me in the webinar as well. And do visit our website at mentorminternational.com where you'll find um, those case studies, but we'll make sure they're emailed out as well. But if you have any questions or queries or any feedback, um, please do get in touch using the options below. But I'd like to thank you again for your time. And um, I'll, I'll stay on the line for a couple of minutes if you have any other questions. But thank you very much.
If there are no other questions, I'm going to um, end the webinar here. But thank you again for your time, and um, I'll speak to you again soon.